So Friday the 13th Part 2 came out one year later in 1981. And again, the success of the first one. Obviously, this one was a success as well. And this one actually has Jason in it. Were murdered. Why should Friday the 13th, 1981, be any different? <laughs> Friday the 13th part two killer but the issue is that doesn't make any goddamn sense before i get into like the trivia and facts let's just talk about this it really the fact that they bring back jason which again this boy drowned in 1958 he would have been a couple of years old like four or five let's say 22 years later it would have made him in his late 20s and how did he survive this the panel just make make it up he's like i'm just gonna rationalize this and make it up so i could go on a killing swing for like 20 plus years like was that like the rationale it does not make any goddamn sense that's why jason is alive big built and going and killing people again it doesn't make any goddamn sense it's something you have to get over i'm really watching and be like how does he come back it doesn't make any sense it's a bunch of plots and everything i was like okay i'm gonna have to get over this and you, you have to have if you don't man you're gonna be sitting in there just thing for years you know this one has a sidekick jason with the one eye pico thing which looks cool i didn't mind that look but obviously the hockey mask looks way cooler and it's very iconic but yeah just had to mention that in the beginning it makes no sense to why they brought back jason but anyways this is kind of the trivia so when filmers asked the actor who played alice to reprise her role she said that she wanted to be on screen for a short period of time because there's an obsessive fan who was stalking her broke in her apartment she feared for her life which is funny enough because that's what happened in the beginning of this movie where she's making coffee or whatever and jason breaks into her house puts his mother's decapitated head in the fridge and stabs her in her in her neck or head right and man using real life you know occurrences in the movie like that it's kind of scary i mean gotta, they obviously asked the actor if they're comfortable with it and it's like yeah sure so yeah that was cool little little fact there she had numerous encounters with fans so she the situation escalated a stalker case so to avoid any you know further acting opportunities she didn't do any on-screen work or film since that well has done voiceover work on several films more than 15, 15 years later yes yeah, sucks when there's a crazy person specifically one episode of fan that ruins the person's career that just sucks so i guess i'll uh, this is the ending but in the scene where jason crashes into the window and grabs jenny the final girl the actor warrington gillian or gilliet is actually hurt he tried to break the window but instead he just banged his head really hard on the glass oh wow i mean it would have he has you know prosthetic on for jason so i mean it obviously it would hurt that much right jason dressed look exactly the same as the killer from the town that dreaded sundown 1976 only difference is that the sack that he wears only has one eye hole i'm sure it's slightly different than design yeah so obviously it was inspired by this slasher this other sort of movie i didn't even watch that and the sequel slash matter remake came out in like 2019 or like in the 2010 and you watch that actually this is reminding me just watching other movies that i haven't that i need to watch here in quarantine time still in october a lot of part two shocked the most people associated with the original film betsy palmer tom savini and sean cunningham all have made public remarks of how stupid it was that jason was alive the whole time and if he was only then why didn't he just tell his mother that he was alive which would avoid all the murders in part one yeah it's just like you know the studios like this made a lot of money and we want to milk the shit out of it and they did and yeah and a lot of little lot of stupid decisions not all of it was dumb ideas or decisions but oh man oh i didn't think, just get over that amy still final girl jenny said that she found the shooting window scene difficult that shot required three takes and her frightening reaction is genuine because the shot was in slow motion the high-speed camera was new every time she heard the film start running tense up and get scared yeah that like this couple of moves in like in like fake outs and that's just kind of not my favorite cup of tea but ends and fake outs and and like slow motion shots or like still shots and it's kind of like okay sure but apparently amy still was actually genuinely scared so she acted the shit out of that for, for that end scene the movie has one of the longest pre-credit sequences in cinematic history nearly 15 minutes in some versions okay one thing i will mention is the first six minutes of this movie is recap and the first couple they do this recap thing in, in the beginning of each movie it's like i get it it's to remind audience but someone who's binge watching this series right now god i have to skip this there's like a skip button here i have to like skip and it's kind of it's funny you know but it's like man they really need to fill in time because again it's part of the same situation where they had like a 30 or 40 minute you know movie material script you need to stretch things out for, so like the first six minutes is like recap so you know i get it but you know it's whatever in a deleted part of the ending after the camera has completely zoomed on zoom zoomed in zoomed in on mrs Voorhees' head her eyes open and she smiles at us indicating that jason has killed paul i mean that would have just confused a lot of audiences are they implying something supernatural now okay this is ridiculous apparently 48 seconds were cut by the mpaa to avoid the x rating i mean if 48 seconds were cut those 48 seconds must have had good gore and kills because it didn't feel like the movie was less gory it's overall felt the same but just a bit better honestly 
honestly. Like, it felt kind of, I don't know. I didn't really feel it in this movie, honestly. As some of the other movies, the NBA wasn't on their asses yet. They were now, but they weren't, like, holding, you know, grabbing the motherfucking balls, you know? At a horror convention, Betsy Palmer said she would never appear in another Friday movie, but I forgot she did one. She was in Los Angeles at the time to film part two in Connecticut, and she was hired for one day filming from a black screen. Yeah, so when our main final girl, Jenny, she does her psychology degree to stuff, they show footage of her and mother, Pamela, at the same shot. And of that, they just been used shots from the first film, but apparently, they actually had her coming for one day just to shoot for a quick paycheck, you know? Yeah, here goes, uh, she was very surprised to be asked back for a cameo appearance by director Steve Miner. She assumed that Jason was dead, so she filmed her lines sort of a half day of the new uh, mocked up of her head was created by a makeup effects team, claiming that she had never seen film itself. Yeah, I mean, as stated in a previous video, she did paycheck, you know, assume, you know, this wouldn't get, you know, no, well known and whatever. I'll just do this for a quick paycheck. Five years after the first, which is set in 1978, according to Friday the 13th final chapter, you know, this film takes place in 1984 during both summers, both Friday the 13th occurred in June, making this film take place five years after the events of the first film. Yeah, I don't, I mean, you have to look up the timelines for this movie, for this franchise specifically, because I don't pay attention to that at all. Honestly, all of it feels the same to me, if I'm being completely honest, but Walt Gorney, who played Crazy Ralph, was seen many times walking around set talking to himself. It's possible he did this just to get more character. Yeah, I like Crazy Ralph. He did come back for the sequel, but it, it sucks that Jason does sadly kill him by choking his ass out in this movie. It sucks, you know, he was just that goofy, crazy old man that no one would listen to, and I like them. You know, I like them. He, he was a very minor character, just very little role, and I like probably my favorite character, honestly, in these first two. But okay, so according to director Steve minor the ending where jason attacks jenny through the window is not a dream but gives a mystery as to what happened to muffin wait who the fuck's muffin oh god i'm forgetting a lot of characters again i don't know jenny the final girl and jason who the fuck is muffin they're referring to paul or her boyfriend shit i don't know characters are so forgettable the actor playing is jason actually the shortest at 6 1 that is considered short jesus I, and i mean i know that jason's tall but 6 1 is the shortest it's fucking ridiculous if you ask me man tall as shit now it is believed that paramount had not agreed to finance this film following the sequels warner brothers distributed the first film outside of the U.S. great success and willing to step in and take over. It's kind of shitty on Paramount. I don't know what their financial state was like in the 80s for both Paramount and Warner Brothers, but I'm assuming Warner Brothers were pretty big at the time, way bigger than Paramount, so they want to, you know, they saw dollar signs and they funded it, so yeah, there's that. So Warrington starring Jason dropped off the production citing injuries, so at least two other people took over as Jason in the role for the movie. Including a female who was standing for moments at the beginning of the film while they're filming Jason's feet stalking Alice. Oh really? That was a woman? feet Did not know that but the well-known slasher pop culture concept of jason Voorhees primarily murdering teenage and young adult camp counselors at camp crystal lake this marks the first and only of two friday films where jason actually does such really the other being part six jason lives oh wow, that's interesting i never thought about it like that huh man the more you know i guess jason was originally the working title of the movie so instead of they went friday 13th to jason uh, okay sure sure i mean funny enough jason would be you know after the eighth one new line would take over or have the rights to it and just call it Jason so because they have the rights to it interesting that's interesting and last what Jason actually dies a phone in part 2 Alex picks up the phone at the beginning and somehow hangs it up and plans that it's Jason although where he learned how to use a phone is anybody guesses again Jason coming back doesn't make any goddamn sense they made shit up have Jason dial a phone number because why not you know he's alive <sighs> just need to get over that let's talk about the film I'm gonna look at my goddamn notes because this film is honestly just as forgetful and boring as the first one but slightly better the final girl's better but there's psychology degree which she needs at the end and the counselors and characters are a bit more likable especially the wheelchair guy i love that guy and his death but anyways let's get on with how the movie starts again with alice dying jason some odd dollars numbers one up there's a new camp crystal thing new teens there's a campfire story they her boyfriend paul i think is his name tells the story of, of jason and like with the first one these camp counselors they mess around they play poor they arm wrestle you know there's they're fucking around i think a chunk of them they go into a bar do more explaining about jason and psychology bullshit and the rest of the teens or not teens I, I guess young adult and teens staying in the cabinets they get killed off one by one and the only one wor worth mentioning is the wheelchair guy where he like starts looking for someone and then jason smacks him
the machete and hits wheelchair and himself starts falling down these stairs and i still laugh at that hilarious man it's still hilarious man seeing this guy falling out these steps of stairs he's handicapped he's crippled and jason just really murder him just oh and then he falls back and falls down these guy down the stairs and, and it like zooms in and goes white for some reason the editing is kind of weird too it zooms in and goes white weird but a hilarious kill and then i think the half chunk of kids they go or i think it's just jenny and paul or her boyfriend whatever the fuck and then they see that all everything's in shambles popcorn's being popped stuff are being cleaned and then obviously she and paul face jason they obviously run out of the woods just like the trope would be that there she meets his shed oh by the way let's talk about this shed apparently he's living in the shed this cop comes by and he gets killed by jason and so while he's been in his shed he decides to have his mother's head in this shrine in this shed and so jenny you know she sees that she gets creeped the fuck out she decides to put on the jacket and uses her psychology degree which is jason it's all done jason you've done your job well and mommy is pleased mentioned throughout this whole movie which is i guess a praise i can give this movie they mentioned her you know degree in psychology which you can use it like understand people and she obviously quickly you know quicker on her toes understands jason but she like she yells you know this is mother talking to you jason you know something like that and then paul gets in hits him she breaks out of it and then she stabs him in the back keep in mind this jason is human he's not the supernatural jason that we know and love that everyone knows so he should die right and so he gets stabbed and then that's how the movie ends no actually i lied the movie ends with the whole window Part. apparently it's a uh, surprise surprise shocker it's another dream right she's in where she has his pitchfork and he comes in grabs her his mask is off he has like air and a weird looking face grabs her right, it's another dream and it's not even known that her if her boyfriend or lover is even alive that's still like a fan theory thing they don't explain that at all so there's that and yeah that's how the movie it's another freak out another dream you know i mean one year later they obviously gotta reuse assets because they're just milking the i mean they're gonna start milking the shit out of the series you know pretty relatively soon very quick oh and by the way I forgot to mention Jason runs in this movie by the way when the cop guy sees him or catches him he runs it will be relevant later for a, a later movie I'll talk about later more specifically the remake but I'll get to that but yeah overall like honestly this they made the same film again one year later they made the same film but it was just slightly better due to more likable characters more memorable kills well I don't know about kills there's only one I like and Jason being it with the very memorable mask the sackhead Jason so again overall Friday the 13th part 2 1981 is just a okay it's you know i guess audiences loved it actually how much did it make i'm gonna look that shit up right now on prof hold on how much how much uh i can't believe this wasn't put in the wikipedia thing hold on looking this shit up right now the box office was nearly half of the first one which was 21.7 million obviously the budget was way higher to 1.25 million so yeah it made half of the first one which 21 million and is nothing to scoff at that's still a lot of money and obviously it would land on more sequels but yeah i don't know they made the same movie twice they, they made the same movie two times in a row within two years but within a year apart sorry and then, i don't know man it's still kind of boring kind of dull slightly better it's okay though and also if it seems that i'm going to talk about this these two films specifically quickly it's because there's really nothing to talk about if i'm being completely honest the script is probably like worth 30 to 40 minutes worth of actual material and they need to stretch it out to a full length future film 80 minutes 90 minutes and you don't really need those you know those fats you know those those extra minutes so those extra scenes but they need you know they need to fill in time so it may seem that i may be just kind of brushing through this but there's really nothing to talk about it's the same movie you know there's the final girl they figure out you know obviously in the end figure out how to kill jason or get rid of him or defeat him if vision he'll come back and it'll be the same thing because they milk this franchise but anyways next is uh, the third one friday 13 part three and the new thing sort of marketing ploy for this one is in 3d 